Good morning and welcome to St Paul and St Stephen's Church, Gloucester, for this service of the word on this the 14th of February 2021, Valentine's Day. And so we come to celebrate human love, but also to consider the love we have for one another and for our planet. To be encouraged in praying for that planet and for one another, wherever we are this morning. We take a moment, whether we are together with others or by ourselves, to come into the presence more fully of the eternal God, creator, redeemer and sustainer. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Spirit of God hovered over the water and brought life to all creation. Calm Holy Spirit and renew the face of the earth. We confess our part in the disfiguring of the whole of creation. For the wrong we have done against God and our neighbour, human sin disfigures the whole of creation, which groans with eager longing for God's redemption. We confess our sins in penitence and in faith. We confess to you our lack of care for the world you have given us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our selfishness in not sharing the earth's bounty fairly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our failure to protect resources for others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In Christ Jesus all things are made new. And so we sing our praise to the God of love who brings love and life even out of death. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A prayer for this special day. O God, who is love, let love empower our compassion. Let love embrace each and every one. Let love unite humans and non-human in restorative coexistence. O Jesus, love come down to earth. May we honour the earth. May we honour all that dwells in the earth. May we be reconciled with the earth. Become what we are of the earth. O Spirit of love, grant us a spirit of humility, grant us a spirit of carefulness, grant us a spirit of friendship for the earth and all that dwells with us here. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way there from Gagal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said to him, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. 
The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of a company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. For me, the account of the Transfiguration is always awe-inspiring and also encouraging. Awe-inspiring because of the terrifying nature of God, the power of God, I mean, not the judgmental terrifyingness of God, the power of God in that moment. The realisation for Jesus of the ministry that he's about to accomplish, the way in which he knows once he's spoken to Elijah and to Moses that he has to come down the mountain and face towards Jerusalem. He needs to complete this mission and this ministry. And it's also encouraging because of Peter, who gets it so wrong, who completely misunderstands. But bless him, he misunderstands because of his terror. He's not sure what this is about. He doesn't understand what is to come and he will fight it until... The day he sees his beloved Lord nailed to a cross. I wonder how terrified we are at the moment. Maybe not terrified of God, but terrified of the future. Terrified of all the things that we have lost. All the things that we might still not be able to do this year, even with the vaccine. And maybe, yes, we are terrified about God. Maybe we are asking, where are you? Why are you not completing your mission and your ministry? Where is this kingdom that you have told me about so many times? And yet, in our heart of hearts, we also know that God is there standing on the mountain, discussing the plan working it out. God has it worked out. And we are to dwell with him. We're not to make dwellings apart from ourselves. Peter gets it wrong. He wants to set up dwellings. He wants to make separate places for Jesus and Moses and Elijah to inhabit. Actually, the thing that Jesus came to tell us was that he would dwell with us. There are no need for separate dwellings. He is dwelling within us. The transfiguration is the very greatest revealing, if you like, of who Jesus is. God's son with whom he is well pleased. That echo of the words from the baptism. There are a culmination for that bookend, the beginning of his ministry, and now this hinge moment where he turns his face to to Jerusalem. Those words from God are what he needs along the way. They're like stepping stones, markers. And we need those markers too. We need, like Peter, to know what's happening, 
what's going on, God? And yet he can't always give us those stepping stones. He can't always show us exactly what is going to happen. We need to trust in the light, the glorious, glorious light that surrounds us on every day. That transfiguration that happens, that shows us that Jesus is the light of the world and loves us constantly. And even when we cannot see the wet way, we are terrified or tired. And actually, we just want to make a dwelling and sleep. We are to remember that his dwelling is with us. Within us. In our very being and our souls. He has redeemed us and rescued us through his choice to walk towards Jerusalem. And so our dwelling place is with him now. There is no need for a separate dwelling place. Amen. And so trusting in that light, we declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. We believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world. We believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Sovereign God, Lord Jesus Christ, you came as the Prince of Peace to bring healing to the nations, to overcome hatred with love, evil with good and darkness with light. Teach us what that means in today's complex and troubled world, where tension and unrest continue to dominate, where violence and the threat of war are all too real, and where mistrust, intolerance and prejudice still hold sway. Grant wisdom to leaders of nations, to all whose decisions will shape the future of this world, and by your spirit, break down the barriers that divide us and bring closer the day of your kingdom. In your name we ask it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you have promised that those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. But we pray today for those who simply hunger for food and thirst for water. In our fractured world of rich and poor, haves and have-nots, create a yearning for change and a passion for justice. And may that begin in us, our willingness to share and identify with others, marking us out as your people, to the glory of your name. Amen. Living God, respond to the cry of the poor and the entreaties of the needy, and grant that the time will come when people everywhere receive a fair reward for their labours, sufficient for all their needs, a time when this world's resources will be distributed justly, all having enough and none too much. Hear the cry of the oppressed and exploited, the hungry and homeless, the sick and suffering, and help us to hear it too and to respond in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the future of your whole creation. Help us to love it more dearly, to steward it more wisely, to give thanks and praise for the way in which it has helped us through these lockdowns and to acknowledge the power of your natural world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, as you touched those with leprosy, restored sight to the blind, brought peace to the disturbed and enabled the lame to walk, Come now to all our, who are sick in body, mind and spirit, bringing again your light, your healing touch and renewing grace. Gracious God, we count ourselves in amongst those who are sick in body, mind and spirit and pray for ourselves too, bringing our needs to the foot of your cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we pray for those faced by the prospect of death. 
whether wrestling with terminal illness or coming to terms with failing health and advancing years. For all who are in intensive care with COVID or in hospital with COVID. For all who are caring for them. For the families of those who are dying. For our hospital staff, our hospice staff. For those in the community. Enabling dignity at the end. In all the fear and sorrow they may feel, give the assurance that not even death itself can separate them from your love and that you hold in store for them things more wonderful than they have yet begun to imagine. We pray for your comforts and your peace in the hearts and minds of all who mourn across this country and across this world, in our own community and in our own lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for everything that is ahead of us. May your light illuminate your will for us and give us your peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, for ever and ever. Amen. May our loving God, who created the world and all that is in it, inspire us to delight in our beautiful home and to live in wonder, peace and joy. May our living God keep our hearts turned to loving our neighbour and to respecting the creation we share. May our merciful God help us to live this week in love and hope and fill us with peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all whom you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.